Awesome. Okay, Psalm 91, verse 14 through 16, it says, Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. Another translation actually says, Because he focuses his love on me, I will deliver him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges me, my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you that you're the bright and morning star. We thank you that you are the crown of beauty. You are the head of the church. You are our leader, the lawgiver, our refuge, our rock, our redeemer. And we say yes to you this morning, God. I decrease so that you would greatly increase. We pray, Father, that you would speak to our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name. And every heart says, Amen. Amen. All right, I'm excited. I want to preach a message to you this morning called Shift Your Focus. Shift Your Focus. You know, many people today say that the year 2020 is considered perfect vision. I don't know if you heard many prophetic words a lot of prophets and, and ministers of the gospel have given this word uh, about how this year uh, is the year of 2020 vision. And as I was preparing this message and um, as I was in prayer, I really felt the Lord minister to me that maybe he is using this year for us to see clearly that he is in charge and he's the only one who can help us. You see what's going on in the world today, a lot of negative things going on, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of demonic things going on, and Jesus is the only answer. He's our only hope. And people that don't know him are not going to receive this hope, and they're not going to receive the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Why? Because they don't focus their love on him. A lot of people want deliverance, but they're not focusing their love on Jesus. And so I believe that the word this morning and for the church is focus. God wants to shift the way you think, the way you process things, the way that you function, the way you walk, the way that you talk. And I want to encourage you today that when Jesus is not centered and supreme in your life, everything about life shifts out of orbit and moves out of the way. And so this morning, as I'm preaching to you, I want you just to examine your heart. The Holy Spirit is going to highlight some things, uh, you know, that are just against his holy nature that you've been doing or just it, you're in the right place this morning. There's breakthrough and freedom here. So I believe that God is going to expose some things with the light of Christ. And he's going to let you know, hey, you haven't been focusing on me, but I want you to turn your fix your eyes on me. The Bible says he will give perfect peace to those who keeps their eyes stayed upon him. Who, whoever keeps their mind stayed upon him. He will give them perfect peace. And I don't know what you're going through this morning. Many of you are going through struggles and situations maybe in your family in your marriage in your finances I'm not sure but all I do know is that God wants to give you peace in your heart that surpasses all understanding but it all starts with you shifting your focus somebody say focus keep your eyes on Jesus I want to share testimony with you uh, last June I was in Texas we did like a rise up tour it was me and a couple other people my dad came and a mentor of mine and some family and we went to seven different cities in texas we were in san antonio alice corpus christi dallas and in houston and i think like two other small cities in dallas and i remember on a saturday night this was father's day weekend last year we were at this church very small sanctuary it was packed with so many people in there i mean it was so hot it was just crazy and smelly you know a lot of people just it's crazy and I remember getting ready for the service. I was scheduled to preach. My friend BG was opening up, and the Holy Spirit just, uh, he manifested himself so strongly. I didn't end up preaching. He just kept going. He was talking about who the Holy Spirit is, talking about the fire of God, the power of God, the glory of God. And all of a sudden, as my friend BG was preaching, I kid you not, everybody in the sanctuary fell to their knees and started manifesting. 
How many know, Pastor Vlad, demons coming out is a good thing? That's how you know that the kingdom of God has come upon a place. When demons start manifesting and freedom, start, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So long story short, we were there for about three and a half hours. I mean, truly revival was breaking out in this sanctuary. We were there for, I mean, hours. Young people being free from just demons that have been tormenting them since they were younger. Uh, I mean, so many wounds were being healed and every bondage of the enemy was being broken off of these people's lives. And it was just a mighty move of God. I mean, we didn't get out of there till late, late in the evening. I had to preach two services on the next morning for a Father's Day service in Dallas and we're all the way in in Corpus Christi so what does that mean we got to drive six hours through the night and I have to preach first thing in the morning so we hit the road my cousin drives there finally get to the church I have to preach two services my cousin was with me and my friend BG who preached that night was with me they said Matt we're not gonna be able to go to the service we're so tired from driving through the night but we'll see you later this evening so they took off to the hotel I went to preach once I got done preaching, the pastor, after we ate, dropped me back off at the hotel. I get in my room, and my cousin and my friend BG say, Matt, while you were gone preaching, you're not going to believe what happened. I said, what happened? They said, while you were gone, we came to check in our room with the confirmation number that you gave us. And the hotel clerk looked at us. And he said, hey, how are you? What are you guys doing here? And they said, hey, we're, we're you know, from L.A., from Chicago, and we're just here uh, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the guy looked at him, and he said, get away from my desk. I'm not checking you in. This happened. So they're all confused. They're thrown off because, I mean, you're going in a hotel for a room that was paid for, so you expect to get your room key and go to the room. So they went to, you know, they're trying to talk to the guy. He says, I said, get away from me. I'm not checking you in. So my cousin and my friend, they tried to get a hold of me. Of course, I didn't answer. I was preaching, and I had no idea that this was going on while I was gone. They tried to get a hold of corporate, and, you know, they're just, like, outside because the guy's not letting them in the lobby. And this is just crazy. Pastor Vlad, while they're out there, my cousin, all of a sudden, a light bulb went on in his head, and he said, this is backlash for all God did in Corpus Christi last night. The devil's mad. He says, so we're not going to yell at this guy and get in our flesh. We're going to bless him. How many know the Bible says, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. So my cousin takes out a $20 bill. Brandon's on the phone with corporate. He says, yo, I'm going to give the guy cash. I'm going to bless him. So Brandon's like, oh, yeah, I want part of that. He gives him a 20 So my cousin has $40 in his hand, goes in the lobby, goes up to the hotel clerk. He says, look. We just want to apologize if we've said anything to offend you. So we want to bless you. And we're just looking for a place to stay. I mean, he doesn't need to do that. The, the room was paid for. But he humbled himself and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what Jesus would do in this moment. He blesses the guy. How many know money talks? God takes the money. He was like, oh, well, your, friend, your friend didn't give me anything. I was like, wow. My cousin's like, the other 20 is from him. And he got just embarrassed, so he said, yo, call, call him in here. So they both come in the lobby, and what happened was crazy. He says, to be honest with you, I didn't kick you out of this lobby, and I didn't check you in because my friend was BG was African-American. He said, I didn't do that because of your race or anything like that. The, the truth is, the moment you mentioned the name of Jesus, something triggered in me. And they were listening to the guy. He said, and when you said you were here for church and for the gospel, for Christianity, it reminded me of what happened to me when my wife left me for a pastor. Crazy. So they look at the guy and they were just loving on him, sharing the gospel with him. This guy gets so wrecked by the love of God. He looks at my cousin, my friend. He says, I will never treat a minister like this a day again in my life. In fact, when they come in here, I'm going to put them in our best suite. Can I get you anything? Can I get you some water? Can I get you some cookies? This happened. And so my cousin and BG look at him and he says, okay, yes, yes, absolutely. But first you have to let us pray for you because you can't go another day with that bitterness in your heart. They pray for this guy. He gets totally set free. And I saw the man the next day, and the countenance of his face completely changed. And, and it was just, 
it was a beautiful testimony but what is my point here see instead of thinking about how hard the test was of being in your flesh they instead focused on what God would have them do in that moment see what happened in my cousin Justin's heart in that moment outside of the lobby was the Holy Spirit enlarged his understanding he said I'm gonna shift your focus to where you're not gonna walk in your flesh but you're gonna do what Jesus would do in this moment see that man was going through something and instead of my cousin and BG getting all worked up and yelling back at him it was in that moment that they shifted their focus and they said no 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 this is what the enemy wants how many have uh, 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 um, grew up in the church and remember those wristbands WWJD what would Jesus do I believe today we need to adopt a purpose statement of what would Jesus want me to do in moments where I want to walk in my flesh if we could be real here here some of you probably would have cussed out that hotel clerk you would have started yelling and getting in your flesh but see the devil tried to distract them with that clerk's attitude but I came here to let you know today that distraction is the enemy of focus and I believe that we're constantly tempted to pull away from a consistent focus on Jesus. And as a result, we find ourselves being tossed to and fro by the concerns of life. And I want to exhort you this morning that keeping focus on Jesus means that we're purposely fading out everything that pulls us away from connecting with Him. It's a disciplined lifestyle of choosing to see every blessing and struggle through the lens of Christ. You might be in here today saying, Matt... How can I stay focused uh, uh, in the midst of a busy life, in a world full of busyness? Well, like I said in the beginning of this message, Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 says, You will keep the mind that is dependent upon you in perfect peace. Somebody shout peace in this place. See, when you focus on Him, He'll give you perfect peace. Think about that for a second. Not a little peace, not a portion of peace. The Bible says perfect peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. And I want to let you know today that you cannot expect God to be the source of your peace if the world is your source of satisfaction can I say that one more time I want the peace of God Matt I, I really need peace in my heart well you can't expect him to be the source of your peace if the world truly is the source of your satisfaction I'm telling you today to evaluate what is distracting you from God ask yourself which aspects of, of your life are pulling you further away from him it might be pressures and responsibilities such as work school or relationships these are common distractions but I came here to let you know by the Spirit of God that our lack of intimacy with him our lack of focus with him causes a void that we try to fill with the frailest of substitutes but I want to tell you that the more you focus on yourself the more distracted you will be from the proper path but the more you know him and commune with him the more that the spirit will make you like him anybody in here just want to shift your focus and say God I have been dwelling on negative things I haven't been keeping my gaze on you but today I make the decision to keep my eyes on you to shift my focus and the more that you are like him the better you'll understand how much you need him for all of your life's difficulties and that's the only way you could know real satisfaction can I share one more testimony another time I was in Texas some months later after we did that Texas tour in those cities uh, I remember I was in I was in South Texas and I was preaching three times out, out there I went to this church uh there was two nights two night revival it was wednesday night and a thursday night and i remember friday morning we woke up we got the latest checkout and we were just so tired god was moving and we had to go to another conference in uh, alice texas which was like about an hour drive we were on a very very tight schedule and i remember i had to do something i had to go to the bank so i look up on my phone bank of america near me because i know in alice it's in the middle of nowhere there's no bank of america out there probably miles and miles away so I said, let me get this done while we're here in town. So I looked up on the GPS, says about six minutes away. We're about to pull up to the bank. Zach, this is crazy. And as I'm about to pull up, I mean, we don't have a minute to kill. As I'm pulling into the bank, we get stopped by a train. I said, you got to be kidding me. My friend BG was with me, and he said, Matt, we have no time to kill. I said, bro. Let's just wait a few minutes, all right? This train, will, this train will go by any moment. 
Two minutes goes by, train's still going. He's looking at me. I'm looking at him. Just 30 more seconds. He looks straight, and I'm, I'm, he's, his face just looked like, like, what the heck's in front of him? So I'm like, what are you looking at? And the train stopped. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I'm like, bro, five more seconds, five more seconds. And he's like, Matt, we got to go. I'm like, bro, the train, look, it's about, it's about to go right now. The train starts going backwards. I said, you got to be kidding me. Zach, I've never seen a train go backwards before like this. So I'm like, this is unbelievable. So to be honest with you, I was a little like in my feelings because I needed to get something done. I had a plan. I had everything planned out, okay? And when it didn't work out, kind of got upset a little bit, kind of got frustrated, all right? We're human. We got emotions, all right? Some of us are very emotional people. And I looked at my friend. I pulled that thing in reverse. We turned around. We, we hit the freeway. And while we're on the freeway, this Porsche just zooms right past us, cuts us off. And I'm like, what the heck? And all of a sudden, the state trooper is like right behind us, and it's getting really close to the car, all right? And I'm like, oh, man, we're going to get pulled over. And my friend's like, no, 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 you saw the Porsche zoom past us. The, you're good, man. The state trooper's going to going to pull them over. I'm like, no, 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 BG, this car is really close to us. I think we're going to get pulled over. And I'm really nervous because this car does not belong to us. It belongs to a pastor in San Antonio and it's got illegal tents on it. <laughs> and I'm from Chicago. All right. So, so he's looking at me and all of a sudden the red and blue lights come on. And I'm like, dude, I told you we go on the side of the freeway. All of a sudden was a young state trooper, a young woman. She comes on the passenger side. We rolled down the window. She's like, are you aware that the registration on this vehicle is expired? I said, no, I had no idea. I'm trying to be smooth cruise at this point. I'm just a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He loves you more than you could ever imagine. I mean, I'm trying everything to get out of this situation. This pastor's never going to invite me back at his church again. I was like, oh, man, this is horrible. I look at her, and... Uh, I give her my license. She says, I'll be right back. Thank God she had remorse. She just smiled and went back to her car. My friend BG looks at me and says, Matt, I think we're supposed to pray with this state trooper. And I was like, okay. She comes back around again, and she gives me my license back. She says, look, you're good. Just make sure whoever you let whoever owns this vehicle know that the registration is expired. They need to renew it ASAP. I said, thank you so much. God bless you. You're such a woman of God. <laughs> and he looks at her. He says, ma'am, can we pray for you? She said, sure. My friend starts prophesying over this state trooper, and she starts bawling her eyes out on the side of the freeway. Are you hearing me? Let me just go over here a little bit so you guys can hear the story. I mean, this lady was like bawling on the side of the freeway. And I'm looking at her. She's looking at me. I said, ma'am, you pulled us over, but today God had other plans to pull you over. I'm like, she just ran our registration. God's totally downloading her registration to my friend. I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. But what is my point? We hit the road. I was so wrecked by what just happened. God totally touched a state trooper. And I'm looking at him. I said, dude, this is crazy. If we were a minute earlier, we would have never got pulled over. If we were a minute later, we would have never got pulled over. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, you remember that train that stopped in front of you? That was me because delay does not mean deny sometimes you got to be thankful for the stall God will stall some things because he has in mind something to do all the all the the entire time I didn't know he had planned to touch a state troopers heart on the side of the freeway but how many know that God's plan is greater than the plan that you have for yourself my plan might have not been that great needed to go to the bank and get something done praise God but God had other plans to minister to his daughter on the side of the freeway and that girl got touched by the spirit of almighty God and what am I saying today why should we focus on him praise God I'm to my first point because number one it positions us to fulfill God's purposes. See, focusing on what the Holy Spirit is doing puts our eyes, somebody say eyes. It puts our eyes on the Father's intended outcome for a situation. See, if you're in here, I want to tell you that we perceive where the Spirit's anointing is as Christians and what God is doing so that we can follow Him. See, even when a situation is at its worst, we can step back into our spirits and say, God, I sense that you, you desire to do something in this moment. I sense that you want to move uh, in a way that maybe I don't understand, but I'm going to focus on you because if I focus on you you're going to manifest yourself in ways I've never seen before number two I'm going to go through these points quickly all right number two it protects us when you focus on God 
it protects us from error and deception. See, when our attention is focused on what the enemy is doing, our perspective tends to become distorted. But And focusing only on the negative is what magnifies the problem, and that can also lead to deception. I want to go through these points again quickly. Number three, it encourages, when you focus on God, it encourages intimacy with the holy spirit see we're all called to an intimate relationship with god and focusing on the holy spirit his anointing and where he is moving and what he's doing encourages our intimate time with him i want to tell you today that god is calling you to greater intimacy he wants to call you out of your comfort zone into a place where you're saying god you're my only lover i want to keep my gaze upon you god i want to focus on you you were so good i thank you I thank you, God, for who you are. Things happen when you start to focus on him. Fourth point here, when you focus on God, it frees you from fear. I mean, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, famous scripture, for the spirit of God gave us not the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. And of a sound mind. See, friend, the truth is that no matter what is taking place in your life, the Holy Spirit is more powerful than any demonic power. And we have the authority in Jesus' name. See, church, I want to tell you that when we allow the Holy Spirit to give us focus, that's when we experience God's power, His intention, His faithfulness, His love, and His greatness. Can I go back to Psalm chapter 91, verse 14 through 16? It says, because He has focused His love on me, I will deliver him I will protect him because he knows my name when he calls out to me I will answer him I will be with him in distress I will deliver him and I will honor him what are you seeking today what is it that you need in your heart breakthrough maybe maybe a financial miracle maybe a healing I don't know what it is but the word of God says when you focus your love on him he will deliver you he will protect you because you know his name and when you call out out to him he will answer you and be with you in your distress see our own flaws can distract us from keeping our eyes on Jesus friend if we think too much about what is wrong with us we will forget about what God can do through us if we look too much at what we lack we will forget to be thankful for what we have see the Bible says to look away from all that would distract us from focusing on Jesus see I want to tell you today that if your faith begins to waver quickly get your eyes on Jesus who is the source of your faith and the reason for your belief if the devil is trying to get your focus on something else you say devil you're a liar I'm gonna keep my gaze on the father he says he will deliver me if I focus his love on me I thank you God for the power of your word this word is alive and active I still believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ I still believe this word is sharper than any two-edged sword I still believe that this word has power to change your circumstances believe in that Bible Matt 66 different books and they're written by different men who lived at different times yet it still points to the man Jesus Christ still don't believe it Matt it's written by a bunch of drunk men people say these things well then why is it banned in at least 52 countries why is this book the most hated book yet at the same time the most sold book Why is it that when people mention the name of Jesus, people start manifesting and get all mad? That should show you the great power that's in his name. They don't get that mad when it comes to Allah or Buddha or Muhammad or any other false god it's g there's power in the name of jesus i want to tell you today to fix your eyes on him shift your focus remember how he endured the cross despising and ignoring the shame of it for the joy of winning you to himself i want to tell you today that people complain about stress but they would rather complain than change i don't want to invite god in my life enough to comfort me i want to invite him in my life enough to cause some change and if we could be honest some of us only let god in enough to comfort us and not enough to cause some change god 
wants you to enjoy a life with simplicity, with sanity, with clear direction, but that only comes by spending time with him and reading his word, talking to him and reading his love letter and listening for his response. See, if you're in here today and you're too busy to get alone with him each day, then you need to set some boundaries in your life. Say no to whatever is keeping you from starting your day with God. Nothing can compare to the ability of being with him until I'm with him. I cannot say that I know him. Come on, somebody. If I have not spent time with him, then I should not be spending time with you. See, that time with him in the secret place is so vital. It's a necessity if you're going to be used by God in your life. It's time to focus. It's time to cultivate the garden of your heart. See, when you're focused on Jesus, you will not focus on anything else. I'm almost through. Many of us struggle with so many things, and many of us are being weighed down by the trials of life. But friend, if you would just focus on God, you would understand that these things are just so little compared to Him. What do you think God tells us to be still? If we're not still, our mind is going to be filled with so much noise from the trials around us. But I came here to encourage somebody that the fire inside you burns brighter than the fire around you you need to get into this word this word is the background noise in your life and I don't care how noisy it gets with situations you got to get into the word of God focus on him somebody say focus you got to run and be alone with the Lord and be still before him allow him to calm your fears and your worries he is who he says he is he is our shelter come on somebody he is our provider he is our healer he is our strength and when you're so focused on God in the midst of trials and in the midst of a pandemic like this that's what shows a heart that trusts in the Lord and I got some good news for you today nothing in hell can scare a heart that trusts in the Lord I want to tell you that the Bible says trust in him with all of your heart lean not on your own understanding that means don't focus on that don't focus in the natural but keep your eyes on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of your faith it's time to shift your focus this morning there's many times in our lives where we just sit and we worry so many things go on but instead why aren't we praying I believe that this is one of the main reasons, Pastor Vlad, why people struggle with depression, they struggle with suicidal thoughts, is because we dwell on the negative and we let these thoughts simmer into our soul instead of seeking our God. See, from the great medicine for your problem is worship and prayer. If I got 10 minutes to pray, I'm going to worship for nine. Why? Because when I begin to lift up the name of Jesus, so you can't tell God who he is and God not tell you who you are. Come on, somebody. When you lift up the name of Jesus and you begin to worship and pray, that's when you're in, you're inviting the mountain mover the shifter to come into your situation and say I am a Lord of your life I'm through and I'm gonna close with this the devil gets your eyes off of Jesus he gets your focus off of Jesus and he wants to limit your praying why because when you focus on God your prayers will limit him can I say that one more time See, the devil wants to limit your praying because he knows your praying will limit him. It's time to shift your focus today. He's a filthy liar. He's defeated in heaven. He's defeated in hell. And he's defeated on the earth. We need to pray without ceasing. Why? Because the devil is praying without ceasing. I'm not talking about P-R-A-Y. I'm talking about P-R-E-Y. He's praying without ceasing. That's why the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. And I came here to let you know, stop talking to God about your problems. Start talking to your problems about your God. That's when you shift your focus. Say, God, I'm no longer going to worry about what's going on in my life I'm gonna start worrying about my prayer life because when I pray things will shift and God I know that you're good and I know that you're faithful and I know that you love me and you and you want to rescue me and deliver me but it all that takes place when I shift my focus and my eyes are set upon you look to the hills from which cometh your help let's look up this morning church and if you're here and you say, Matt, this message was for me. I need to shift my focus. Matt, I, I've been dwelling on negative things, and that's what's been magnifying the problems in my life. I haven't been in the Word of God. I have not been at peace. I've been just weary and, and, and burdened and, and filled with anxiety. But the Bible says, come to me, all those who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He says his own words, Jesus, in his word, cast all your anxiety onto me because I care for you. If you're in this place and you want to make Jesus Lord of your life and you want him to shift your focus,
I want you to lift your both hands above your head right now come on I see all those hands all over the place that's amazing come on if you're on live stream and you want to make Jesus Lord of your life right now I want you to just lift up your hands wherever you are in a sign of surrender if you want to shift your focus you want God to come in and change some things come on lift up those hands and as I begin to sing in just a moment I want to pray with you here and on live stream if you're watching right now God's got his eye on you and he's got plans to prosper you not to harm you come on say this with me church for the benefit of those coming to Christ today and shifting their focus say Heavenly Father I believe that Jesus is my only hope I believe in the power of your word that you truly give peace to those who focus on you so right now I say yes to your will have your way in my heart I surrender in Jesus name